I'm Dr. Barry Epley, plastic surgeon of Indianapolis, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the facelift procedure. The facelift is one of the most common plastic surgery procedures performed, and it does an excellent job in helping reverse the signs of aging. But what I have found is that many patients do not have a very clear understanding of what a facelift is, what it does, and many patients therefore have a fear about facelifts because they don't have the right concepts about what the procedure actually is. A facelift really is improperly named and really should be called a neck gel lift. Many patients envision a facelift as involving the entire face from the scalp down through the neck. And while it is true many facelift patients do get many other procedures with it such as a brow lift, eyes, nose, cheeks, lips, and so forth, uh, a facelift itself is not total facial rejuvenation. Uh, so when you envision someone who comes out with bandages from the top of their head to the bottom and looks bruised for weeks, you are not really referring to a facelift. A facelift in isolation is a jowl and neck procedure and it does an excellent job of doing that. There are incisions that go in front and in back of the ear and the neck and jowl area is tightened, but the facelift will do nothing for the central third of the face or for the area around the mouth. Particularly, a facelift does not really provide significant improvement for the nasolabial folds or for the downturning of the corner of the mouth. Other procedures must be done with the facelift to try to get improvement in that area. So, the most important concept to grasp about a facelift is that it really does its work in the jowl and neck area. And an isolated facelift without any other procedures being done is a very straightforward procedure to go through that doesn't involve a lot of recovery, doesn't have all that much swelling and bruising, and really doesn't give you much pain. The second concept I'd like to share with you about a facelift is that, you know, as we sit here today, there are different variations of a facelift. Not every facelift is the same. And what I mean by that is there are full facelifts, and then there are more limited facelifts. And you simply, you and the plastic surgeon decide which facelift is appropriate for your problem, as well as what type of recovery and result do you really expect to go through and get out of it. The mini facelift goes by a lot of different names today. The S lift, the quick lift, the swift lift, and a whole variety of names, some even names by the surgeon themselves. But in the end, they are all essentially the same procedure. A mini facelift is really a procedure that just has incisions in front of the ear, down around the earlobe, and really should be called a jowl lift or a jowl tuck up. It does have some minor effects in the neck, but its most powerful effect is here in the jowl and the side of the face area. You can see the effects of a limited facelift by simply putting your fingers in front of your ear and lifting upward. That is what you can expect from a, a limited facelift. Limited facelifts can be done with a variety of other procedures uh, throughout the face, whether those are Botox, fillers, uh, brow lifts, uh, upper and lower eye lifts, and so forth. There's just an endless number of procedures that can be done with it. But in isolation, it really is a jowl or, or jowl lift procedure. That's quite different than the more traditional and commonly perceived full facelift where the incisions again are in front of the back of the ear, which is a very powerful procedure for the neck and much more powerful to the neck than a, what a mini facelift can actually do. So there really are two different types of facelifts and mini facelifts are very good for the younger patient, those in their 40s or early 50s that have only a minimal to moderate jowl neck problem, whereas a full facelift is much better for patients who have the neck waddle, the excess skin, and hanging fat uh, in the neck. So that's, I think, the second most important concept to grasp about a facelift, that there are different types and you simply match the type of facelift to the type of problem that you are treating. And it is those two concepts that I talk to most every patient, patient who comes in for a facelift about, or even from patients who come in for just more minor facial rejuvenation procedures. And I think if you can grasp those two concepts, you are well prepared to go to your consult with your plastic surgeon and be much more informed and educated. 
I wish you the best of luck in your facial rejuvenation efforts. I'm Dr. Barry Epley of Indianapolis.